The next step for us is to fine tune when 2.57 billion vision language model with the invoice data set. For this fine tuning activity, we are going to refer the Unslots when to vision language notebook, which basically fine tunes the latex POSIA data set and it has step by step process for fine tuning and inference. Make sure Unslot is installed uh, in the system if you want to run pip install Unslot. Okay, I'm just running NVIDIA SMA to uh, see if there are any GB process running. Okay, now we are going to load the model. In this step, uh, we are using the Gwen 2.5 vision language model, which is 7B instead. If you remember, we did the uh, baseline using the same model. So the model will be I mean, loaded from the checkpoint. And I'm not loading 4 bit to true because uh, we have enough GPU memory. I'm running this test with uh, A40 GPU, which contains around 48 GB of VRAM and uh, the model as such, the 7 billion model takes only around 16 uh, GB of VRAM. So I'm, I'm not loading it in 4 bit, but uh, if you are running with uh, a constrained GPU, make sure to set this particular build to. Now the next step is to uh, initiate the uh, PEP model and uh, we are changing the low, LoRa parameter here. We are uh, um, testing this with 64. The higher the better, but at the same time, maybe 128 might overfit the data set and hence uh, we have set it to 64. Now the next step is to load our data set. In this case, if you uh, notice, we are loading the train data set because we are going to perform training. And uh, the train data set contains 800 different samples. And as usual, it contains the uh, image and the corresponding ground truth value. Now, if you remember, we had this uh, schema dictionary created where we had the menu section, the subtotal, uh, total, and the subsection, which was uh, nested inside the menu segment. Let's initiate this, um, initialize this uh, schema dictionary. Now we are going to create a prompt. Here we are going to create a simple prompt. You are specialized in uh, invoice extraction and uh, your role is to extract information from the invoice and bring it in the JSON format. And here we are uh, dumping our, um, I mean, adding this schema dictionary and fill only the keys only uh, only when the information is available we don't want uh, empty strings to be filled and hence adding this instruction as well right so this is our instruction and the next step is to create this uh, conversation kind of uh, since it's an instruction model we need uh, a set of conversation for that uh, we are going to use the um, instruction and uh, the image as an input and of course, we need to pass in the uh, ground truth values. So, uh, for this fine tuning process, we are going to uh, use two information from the uh, GitHub repository. One is the uh, ground truth. So, if we remember, we we did this parsing where uh, the ground truth contains both ground truth information along with the boundary bounding box coordinates. We are going to parse only the uh, ground truth information and then load it as a dictionary using JSON terms. And uh, for image to avoid out of uh, memory issues, we are going to resample, I mean, resize this image into 640 to 640 dimension. Once we do this for all uh, 800 images, we will create a, a data set where we'll have the images resized to 640 to 640 and we'll have the ground truth information which is being converted to I mean, all these values are passed on to this um, method where we will be creating a conversation which looks like this. While it is running, let's look at one example. Here we can see the message, the user role, basically the uh, prompt that we created along with the uh, nested information of uh, nested JSON along with the details. And of course, we are going to pass in the image as well, which is in the PAL format resize to 640 cross 640 and uh, the uh, assistant output is going to be the ground code. So basically we are trying to tease the model that uh, this is going to be the prompt and this is going to be the image. If that is the case, uh, this, this is how the output should look like, right? So this is one sample output. Let's run this and view it. Yes. And uh, we are not going to do the uh, inference now, so I'm, I'm I'm just avoiding this. The next step for us is to um, 
if you if you want to enable uh, uh weights and biases go ahead and do it uh if you want to track the model training i have already done this training so i'm i'm not enabling it now and uh yeah so i'm just commenting these parameters which are part of uh weights and biases for for this particular test i have uh test i have reduced the overall batch size to one because of the gp constraints and uh i'm i'm training it for three three epochs and um other than that i have i haven't changed any of the parameters so the batch size is going to be one and number of epochs is going to be three and learning rate and other parameters are intact like i haven't changed anything of course yes uh the maximum sequence length so this is the number of tokens that uh uh we are going to use so it's going to be 2048 once we run this and start the training, we are going to see that uh, our uh, data is, will be logged to 1D server and uh, we can uh, wait until the training is finished. Once the training has been completed, we can see the overall time taken for uh, training 3 epochs is around 42 minutes in this server and uh, there are 2400 steps because uh, if you remember, we have 800 samples and uh, for one epoch it, it trains for 800 samples and it's uh, we have trained it for three epochs uh, with respect to loss um, i guess the convergence was pretty quick however we trained it for three epochs maybe two would have been uh, enough because we see the uh, values are slowly uh, converging towards zero and uh, for the next step if you really want to run a sample test with the model which you have fine-tuned just use this set of code where uh, it is going to uh, take an image and uh, print the output and uh, and to save the model there are two different options uh, one one is the local saving uh, where it, it gets uh, saved to the disk and the second one is of course something that uh, i save it in the hugging phase to do that um, i mean um, the uh, unslot provides an uh, a module called push to hub merged where it will be uh, pushed to your uh, hugging face repository so i have added a, a login statement here so that you can um, run this copy your access token and paste it here and then do model at push to hub and this particular model is already being available in hugging face okay the model has been saved to hugging face and uh, this model has been trained with three epochs what we can do now is we can run the same baseline code Instead of using the base model, which is when to that for some billion model, we can use this fine tuned model and perform prediction once with all 100 samples and then see uh, how well the results have improved from the base model. To understand the performance of this fine tuned model, let's quickly load this model using DLLM and run the batch predictions for the 100 invoice sets which were part of the test data. Let's go ahead and load the data set. This is schema. In this case, we don't need an extra example because it's already a fine-tuned model and it has seen enough variations. This is a prompt. And instead of the base Gwen 2.5 uh, vision language model, we are going to use the fine-tuned model. This is a private model, and hence I have added the login I mean a login statement using a uh, Hugging Face Hub. We have to log in and pass in our access tokens here. And let's load this model wait for the model to be loaded okay i have already uh, downloaded this model in my local uh, machine and hence it's going to load it from the checkpoints okay let's wait for the model to get loaded it's loaded or it is taking around 16 gb of vram okay waiting for it to finish here we go so now Let's define the sampling parameters. This is going to be the method which is going to create the messages for us. And this is a sample message. Let's go ahead and run the predictions. Okay, the processing has been completed. And surprisingly, the fine-tuned version of the model took only two minutes and nine seconds to process all 100 samples. And let's go ahead and do the post-process for this and let's print some sample output here we can see the predictions are really really good when compared to our uh, previous results in our previous previous results we were seeing a lot of extra keys and here as we can see let's let's also try a couple of other samples to see 
the predictions are good. Yes, here we can see the prediction is really, really good. And maybe one more sample. Let's, let's see the third one. Right. So we can see the prediction results are comparatively way better than what we had earlier. But let's do the post process and let's see how well uh, the evaluation metrics are showing that the uh, predicting the quality of the prediction results. Okay. Now let's go ahead and compute the accuracy. For that, we are going to flatten it and then run this code. Here we can see the average accuracy for this hundred script hundred invoices is around eighty nine percent. Right. So uh, if you remember the initial template, which we had around uh, 40 percentage and then adding few uh, more instructions, we reached around 65 percentage. Now by fine tuning this model, we, are, we have reached around 89 percentage. Let's go ahead and look into the evaluation uh, metrics with, with respect to precision recalling. And uh, if you remember in the previous uh, cases, we had very low uh, precision and recall due to a lot of false positive and uh, uh, false negative cases. Here we can see the precision and recall has been significantly improved. And for every single key, we have around predictions ranging from 70 to 90 percent. So overall, it looks to be really, really good result. And uh, looks like the model has uh, captured enough variations. And the continuing output has reached around 89 percentage of overall accuracy. Although we have reached around 89 percent of accuracy, validating the failures is really, really important for us to boost the accuracy even further by applying small post processing techniques. If you remember this board where we performed this key to key comparison, whenever the ground truth and the prediction value is matching, we increment the overall score. Let's go ahead and add an else block and print the ground truth which is going to be gt value and the prediction which is going to be the red value okay so whenever there is a mismatch now the we are going to print the ground truth and the prediction so that we can compare and see what are the post processing techniques that we can apply. So from the initial ones, we can see it's truly the problem of space, right? By maybe applying some trims or uh, identifying the spacing might help in boosting the accuracy. And these kind of uh, examples is something that we cannot directly handle in post processing because we have we, we don't have a prediction value in the output. However, we also have lot of cases where we can see we have pi dot four fifty five in the ground root. However, the prediction is pi comma four fifty five, and uh, in the ground root we have sixty dot triple zero, and in the prediction we have sixty comma triple zero. And these are the cases I feel we can easily handle in terms of uh, uh, post processing techniques where we substitute or remove the symbols uh, if we are really going to compare only the numbers. There are also cases where we can see the comparison uh, had a failure due to case sensitivity. And uh, there are cases where uh, we have spell errors, like for example, in this case, the word uh, uh, I mean, uh, had a space and then because of that, there was an error. So by applying this small techniques like uh like here here what we can see it, it is completely due to the space misalignment so by applying small techniques such as space alignments spell checks um validating the symbols even we can use this particular model from uh 89 percent accuracy to 95 percent accuracy.